by God's mercy, grace, wisdom, knowledge, and power. This morning, we want to read a series of uh, messages um, given by famous preachers in the 19th century, those who knew God's word, who studied God's word, who wrote thousands of sermons, those who were really men of God, dedicated to teaching the congregation God's word. I think I'm going to read from two of them. The first one, I'm sure we may all have heard, is Charles Spurgeon. He was the pastor of the London Tabernacle. And uh, he preached in the 19th century, very powerful, sermons and sermons, uh, one can go online, you know, Spurgeon, S-P-U-R-G-E-O-N, and uh, we find just many, many, many sermons. And uh, the sermons relate to every day. I mean, he's been a preacher, was very, very uh, strong uh, preacher. He's called the Prince of uh, Preachers. So if we are using some of his texts here this morning, it is just in honor of what he has done to thank God that he has already brought uh, the information to us. So while it may seem as if it is my uh, information, no, God already provided the information. And so we are repeating the information so that other people will know. And... I go back to what we've said before. We have been deceived. The authorities, the church, the Roman Catholic Church specifically, they have contributed to deceiving mankind. And yes, it was done in the name of Christianity, in the name of Christ. But the devil has a pattern as an angel of light, but what he does is always to deceive, and he has been deceiving from the Garden of Eden. So if by God's grace we are trying to expose the lies, the deception, it is just to awaken others so that they would also uh, study the Lord Jesus Christ even encouraged us to study the scriptures. John 5.39 He says, study. When you study, you will know. Unfortunately, we have all believed. We believe what we were told without going to search to see whether or not it is so. And uh, I always thank God when uh, somebody says, oh, well, uh, you are reading from a different text, and it's oh, sorry, you know. So we need to, and that's why we need to follow. Let's not just listen. Let's just, you know, uh, hear what the Word of God says, so that when we hear it, and then uh, it will be uh, wonderful. So uh, I just like the Bereans in Acts. What did they do? They also uh, studied. They also reviewed. So this morning, by God's grace. We are going to read a series of uh, texts from uh, another preacher, it's Arthur Pink, A-R-T-H-U-R, -R Pink. He also was in the 19th century, you know, 18, 18 something. And so um, they all said things which are applicable today and they knew what was going on. So it is not something new that I am inventing. And what did they say? We go first to Arthur Pink because he has a, a short message. 
and this is given to us in the words from the another great prophet Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 1 to 3 says hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you O house of David two thus said the Lord lend not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them three for the customs of the people are vain for one cut a tree out of the forest the work of the hands of the workman with the ask for they deck it with silver with and with gold they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not amen what is the word of god saying here and we know prophet jeremiah preached long before the lord jesus christ came right so uh the title for uh pastor arthur pink's message is christmas is coming of course again that was a long time ago and what did he say he quoted jeremiah 10 1 to 4 which we have he says christmas is coming quite so but what is christmas does not the very term itself denotes its source, Christ Mass. It is of Roman origin, brought over from paganism. But, says someone, Christmas is a time when we commemorate the Savior's birth. It is? That is the question. And who authorized such commemoration? Certainly, God did not. The Redeemer bade his disciples to remember him in his death. Luke 22, it's there. 19, it's also in our, our proclamation. It's there, 19 to 20. The Redeemer bade his disciples to remember him in his death, but there is not a word in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation which tells us to celebrate his birth. Moreover, who knows when, in what month, he was born? The Scriptures is silent thereon. And who is it that celebrates Christmas? The whole civilized world. He's giving questions and answers. Millions who make no profession of faith in the blood of the Lamb, who despise and reject Him. We would ask, is it fitting that Christ's friends should unite with His enemies in a worldly round of fleshly gratification? Does any true believer really think that he whom the world cast out is either pleased or glorified by such participation in the world's joys? Truly, the customs of the people are vain. It is written in Exodus 23 verse 2, You shall not follow a multitude to do evil. Amen. Some will argue for the keeping of Christmas on the ground of giving the uh, kiddies, the small children, a good time. But why do this under the cloak of honoring the Savior's birth? Why is it necessary to drag, to drag in his holy name in connection with what takes place? at that season of carnal 
jollifications. There are those who do abstain from some of the grosier canalities of the festive season, yet are they nevertheless in cruel bondage to the prevailing customs of Christmas? In the sight of God, the circus and the theater are far, are far less obnoxious than the Christmas celebration of Romish and Protestant churches. Why? Because the latter are done under the cover of the holy name of Christ. The former are not, which means, you know, when you go to the circus and all they are doing it, you know, plainly without, but the other ones, the Roman and other Protestants who celebrated them, they are not. You shall not follow a multitude to do evil. Exodus 23, 2. Ah, it is an easy thing to float with, it, with the tide of popular opinion. But it takes much grace, diligently enough, a diligently sought from God to swim against it. Yet, that is what the heir of heaven is called on to do. Do not be conformed to this world. To deny self, take up the cross and follow a rejected Christ. We've already talked about taking up the cross daily. Luke 9.23 Our final word is to the pastors, to you, the word of the Lord is, you should be an example to the believer in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Where is that? 1 Timothy 4.12 Is it not true that the most corrupt churches you know of, where almost every fundamental of the faith is denied, will have they are Christmas celebrations. Will you imitate them? Seek grace to firmly but lovingly set God's truth on this subject before your people and announce that you have no part in following pagan, Romish, and worldly custom. That is from Pastor Arthur Pink in the 19th century. We are not done. Now, Pastor Charles Spurgeon, Reverend uh, Charles Spurgeon as he was called, this is his uh, commentary. Colossians 2 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Colossians 2, 8. So let me uh, clarify some part. It has always been argued that, oh, these things are being done in the name of Christ and these things, they do it all because they want to show their love for Christ and all of that. But the question is that deception. We have been deceived in so many ways. Yes, people do it because innocently they think. But as we have said before, what has balloons, what has Santa, what has all these things do with uh, lights and all of this? It doesn't have anything to do with Christ. But it's been covered. It's like uh, uh, they have sort of wrapped it nicely. Let's continue and we will find uh, more of what is being uh, said. According to Charles Spurgeon, the Reverend from the London Tabernacle, he says, We have no superstitious regard for times and seasons. Certainly, we do not believe in the present ecclesiastical uh, arrangement called Christmas. First, because we do not believe in the mass at all, but abhor it. Whether it is said in Latin or in English, 
and secondly because we do not find no scriptural warrant whatever for observing any day as the birthday of the Savior consequently its observance is a superstition because not of divine authority superstition has fixed most positively the day of our Savior's birth although there is no possibility of discovering when it occurred we venture to assert that if there is any day in the year of which we may be pretty sure that is that it was not the day on which the Savior was born it is the 25th of December so which means that was never never the day probably the fact is that the holy days are arranged to fit in with heathen festivals there are those who on December 25th will pretend to exhibit joy in the remembrance of our Savior's birth but they will not seek their pleasure in the Savior joy in our Emmanuel would be a poor sort of myth to them in this country and everywhere else too often if one were unaware of the name one might believe the Christmas festival to be a feast of Bacchus and Bacchus or Bacchus uh, so that is uh, the idol of uh, a wine certainly not a commemoration of the divine birth when it can be proved that the observance of Christmas and other popish festivals were ever instituted by a divine statue, then we also will attend to them. But not until then. It is as much our duty to reject the, traditional, the traditions of men as to observe the commandment of the Lord. Those who follow the customs of observing Christmas do not follow the Holy Scriptures, but pagan ceremonies. Alright? How absurd to think that we could celebrate the birth of Christ in the spirit of the world with a Jack Frost clown, a deceptively worldly Santa Claus, and a mixed program of sacred truth with fun, deception, and fiction. If it is possible to honor Christ in the giving of gifts, I cannot see how, while the gift giver and recipient are all in the spirit of the world. The Catholics may have their Christmas one day in 365, but we have a Christ gift the entire year. Since it is lawful and even laudable to meditate upon the incant incantation, incan incarnations of the Lord upon any day in the year, then it cannot be in the power of other men's superstition to render such a meditation improper for today, not regarding the day. Let us nevertheless give God thanks for the gift of his dear son. That is the end of uh, uh, Reverend Charles Spurgeon. Now we want to go into uh, providing other details to help everyone understand. And this is by another writer. This is what people don't know. And the title is The True Meaning of Christ's Mass. Christ is separate and then the Mass. The Mass belongs, uh, M A S A belongs to the Roman Catholic Church. It's a ritual they do. It's a ritual. Let us go on. Nearly all the realm of so called Christianity join in and repeat this same greeting, Merry Christmas. 
Although we hear these words constantly as they resonate millions of times throughout the land, almost nobody understands what they are really saying. That is the problem. A true Christian would want to examine everything they say because the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and th to 37, But I say to you, or I say unto you in the King James, that every idle word that men shall, men and women shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Matthew 12, 36 to 37. Now, we will now set aside all of the customs, glitter, and traditions of Christmas which were taken from pagan witchcraft and popularized by the Roman Catholic Church, and we will focus on the true meaning of the words Merry Christmas. The word Merry is simple to define. It, is unquestionably, it unquestionably means to be happy, joyful, and light-hearted. The word merry fits into the ambience of laughter and frivolity. When, when, when you hear merry, what do you mean? Oh, hi, happy, happy, you know, I know that. But is that what Christ wants us to be doing? This word merry by itself is innocent and innocuous enough, but as we will see, we will now see, it becomes heinously blasphemous when used with the word Christmas. Let it be noted that most people think that the word Christmas means the birth of Christ. By definition, it means the death, death of Christ. Mary Christmas means the death of Christ. And I will prove it by using the World Book Encyclopedia, the Catholic Encyclopedia, which says, The World Book Encyclopedia defines Christmas as follows. The word Christmas comes from Christus, Macy's and uh, C R I S T E S and then M A E S S E Christi Macy, an early English phrase that means Mass of Christ. Mass of Christ. It is interesting to note that the word Mass, as used by the Roman Catholics, has traditionally been rejected by the so-called Protestants, such as Lutherans, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, and so on. Which means, long time ago, they all rejected it. Oh, no, no Mass. No, we, are not, we don't want to be involved with Mass. The word Mass is strictly a Catholic word, and thus, so is Christ's Mass. It will stand to reason that since all of these denominations love and embrace Christ's Mass, that December 25th is a great homecoming day when all of the Protestants become Catholic for a day. So when you are celebrating it, you are converting yourself to being a Catholic as the Mother Church. As stated, the word Mass in religious usage means a death sacrifice. The impact of this fact is horribly and shocking. It's horrifying and shocking. For when the millions of people are saying Merry Christmas, they are actually literally saying Merry Death of Christ. They are happy that Christ is being killed. And then when you think about uh, the Santa Claus, what does he say? Ho, 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 ho. Merry, what, what, when he's saying that, he's actually mocking, mocking and laughing at the suffering and bleeding Savior who died for our sins. 
So consider what you are saying when you say Merry Christmas. And I will admit that because we have been programmed to eat over centuries, when somebody says that, Merry Christmas, you respond immediately, Merry Christmas. We should be rejecting, we should be saying no. You can say, God bless me. You can say, uh, God uh, bless the Lord Jesus Christ. God, you know, do anything. But that Mary is actually, you are saying the wrong thing. And we have been programmed. So you can't even change the world unless God's Holy Spirit helps you to understand that no. Tell me we thank God, we praise God, we believe in God, and we all of these things, and, and we thank God for every day's blessings. We thank God for uh, giving us the opportunity to become saved. He didn't tell us to uh, be celebrating his birth. The apostle never celebrated his birth. All he says, remember me in my death. How many people will go about and carry a cross to say that, oh yes, I am the uh, a Christian, I'm following Christ. So, let us understand that we need to be going on the offense and say no, um, that is the wrong word. And so, when Santa Claus is doing all these things, we've already talked about it in the past uh, week or so, so let us not be involved in that word it is they are saying you know and somebody will say that well it's uh, they are Christ the christian they shouldn't be saying that or they are not saying anything wrong they have been deceiving us for a long time i keep saying that when you go deep and find more and more you'll find that oh what they are doing somebody said what's wrong with me having a tree uh, jeremiah the prophet already said it chapter 10 is there go and read it they are doing this all this. It, they've been doing it for years, thousands of years. So let us deprogram ourselves to remove it from us so that uh, we will not be following the crowd. Exodus 23, 2. says, don't follow the crowd. And the Lord Jesus Christ already told us that every word you say, men are going to be judged by what they said. Some will say, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know, but did you find out what you were saying? So what is so amusing about our Savior's painful death? What is so funny? Why is it Santa Claus laughing? Why are you always uh, going along with it? Your words do count. And Satan knows it. Yes, the word mass does mean death sacrifice. Death sacrifice to uh, Christ. So... If you are interested, uh, you know, and I mean, there's more, there, there, there are more, but we need to do, and when you see the Kali, you're always having the, uh, you know, the body, the, you see, uh, a host. Why is it that Christ has to be sacrificed every now and then, every day, every time? It's more the, the destruction of the victim. Another word gives us information. That in the Christian law, the supreme sacrifice is that of the mass. The supreme act of worship consists essentially in an offering of a worthy victim to God. The offering made by a proper person as a priest. The destruction of the victim. The victim they are considering now is Christ. Look at it. Let's examine the word. Let's examine God's word. Let's pray that God will help us to remove all these things that the Roman Catholic has imposed upon us and we have all accepted. We need to ask God to help us to get out of this and start going on the offense. Don't accept. Don't return by the same greeting. It is the destruction of Christ as a victim. It's not so. We know Christ, our Passover lamb, died for us. But that doesn't mean that it has to be on the day that they want. 
it is through their paganism, their idol. Let us not go there. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention and uh, we know uh, uh, more items uh, to uh, review, but we believe um, what we have provided is enough. The Catholic themselves, they have their encyclopedia and it's all there. But when we don't research, when we think that, oh, everybody is doing it, then we are doing it, no. Let's not follow the crowd. Exodus 23, 2. Because they are doing the wrong thing. So, again, we thank God for what he has brought to our attention and pray that we will reject any of those festival, festivals, festivities, Easter, all those things. They are not Christian. And may God help us. Yes, we know many, many, we have all been deceived into, oh, yeah, let's do it. Christmas gift, Christmas card, Christmas this, Christmas. All these don't have anything to do with Christ. It is rather the devil using that to deceive us, to get along, to follow, to do all those things, which will eventually not uh, be acceptable. So may God help us. We thank God. Let us kneel in prayer.